don't think I've ever worn a hat before. Uh, at least not in a video. Um, I also have never really been a hat person, but um, this is my favorite hat. This is my favorite place in the whole wide world. So I'm wearing it today. It's nice and comfy. I got it um, in 2018 when I went when we did our cross country trip um, to New England, and uh, yeah. Welcome to another installment of. I'm doing a tag. Most likely, well, I'm almost no, certainly incorrectly. Hope you all had a good week. For me, this week has been the longest month. I, I, I can't even. <sighs> but it's the weekend. I wish I could say it's Saturday, but it's not. It's Sunday. In Canada, it's a long weekend. It's uh, Victoria Day weekend. Which I thought was next weekend because being American, Canadian, or whatever you want to call me, being North American, I get the two confused all the time. So, let's pick up from where we left off. And I think I left off at number nine. So I'm gonna just do a little 10, and I'm gonna pick one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think I'll go to 18. We'll see what happens. So, I want to begin by ex by apologizing. Perhaps these questions were not for me. Um, but I want to participate because I, even though um, I have difficulty with these questions, it's challenging and it's interesting to me. So let's begin. Number 10. Do you follow any set rules in your personal practice, such as harm none? Harm none is is a Wiccan um, tenet. Um, it's also really difficult to measure and to maintain. Every action we take, outside of even like rituals or magic spells, or, or every action we take has brings with it unintended consequences so i can set out to um not harm anyone but the, the there there'll come a time where i will make a decision that um benefits me but may not benefit someone else so already that harm none for me doesn't work not on, not on this plane of existence um for instance, for me to eat nutritious food, uh, animals must die. <laughs> um, so the answer is no. In a, in a magical sense, I don't abide by that either because um, one of my um, self-defense um, mechanisms practices, whatever you want to call it, spells, um, is a blessing where I wish upon whomever, whatever they wish upon me. Well, if whomever is wishing me harm and I wish it, and I'm wishing them what they're wishing me, somebody gets harmed. So harm none for me just doesn't I don't think that I don't think that that's in. I think that is specifically in the context of Wicca. Um, any harm none. Do what sh do what thou sh do what thou wilt. Or um, I don't even know why it's in Old English. But anyway, I'm afraid not. Number eleven. Do you believe in the concept of the threefold law of return? No. Not at all. That too is a Wiccan concept. Um, and I'll tell you why. 
I've seen lots of really good people have really bad shit happening to them. If the, if, um, the threefold law of return was a, in fact, in effect, these people who put out so much of themselves, who do so much good, should be receiving three times as much. Instead, it's the people that are hurting the most, the people that are suffering the most, who are giving the most, who are sharing the most of what they don't have. So, no, I don't. Do I believe what comes around goes around? Yeah, because life is a cycle, life is a wheel. Um, I believe we reap what we sow. Um, but that's, a you know, but sometimes we reap what we didn't sow just because we got lucky that the wind blew over some really snazzy seeds to our land, to our garden. Sometimes we sow really good seeds and reap a pile of shit. So, I don't know. I'm sorry, that may have been confusing. But for me, the threefold law of return is like, no, not in that, not in that sense. Do I have a, do you have a separate witchy name? Why or why not? Okay. This ties into a question that comes later. Um, here's what I'm going to say. I, I have a, a name that I'm known as, um, because in the early days of the internet and stuff like that, and I wasn't going to put my real name up because why? Um, I go by Rue. Rue is a nickname. It is, it is what, it, you know, um, and I think in earlier videos or something like that, I described how I got, how I gained that nickname. My dad basically named me after the shrub and it, and its properties. So here, coincidentally, here it is. I have the name that certain spirits, um, call me by. See, I don't know the name of all the spirits I work with. I don't know the names of my guides. I know them by the name they call me. So here's something a little out there. When I see psychics um, that proclaim to know their um, personal, you know, their, their guardian angel's name, they proclaim to know their spirit guide's names, I don't know. If, if that's true. What I do know is that it's possible to give them a name so you have something to call them. But my experience has been that I know who's present by how they address me, like by what they call me. And these are names I'm not going to share. Um, but this is my, this is my public, my public witchy name. It's been public for 20 something years long time uh 22 years 1998 this is the math yeah 22 years okay so i do have this separate name because that's the name i went on i went under online for 10 years until someone doxed me um and then once i was doxed well then cat's out of the bag and um it caused me a lot of a lot of problems. It caused me um, that person who doxed me, um, and their entourage, caused me uh, tremendous um, employment problems, uh, career problems rather, professional problems, and um, that person or the main figure around all this has since passed away. And, um, but for me, the, um, the effect, the effects, the, um, negative consequences of being doxxed, considering where I live and my profession still persist to this day. So that's all I'm going to say for now. Do you write your own spells, use pre-written pre ones, or do a mix of both? I don't write my own spells. 
Um, I may have tried it once and it just didn't didn't feel right. Like it didn't didn't suit me. Because Catholicism is so interwoven in uh, my magical spiritual path. Um, I guess what I use is uh, pre-written. Um, mainly, you know, those of you who practice folk magic are, are going to be nodding your head. It's like, you know, Psalms and, and Catholic prayers and um, the Novena prayers to saints. Uh, the petitions to saints and the novena prayers to saints and uh, the um, the holy rosary so all those things pre-exist me by ooh, a long time so now I have some practices that um, some some things we do in my culture where it's it's just a blessing or something that we say excuse me and that too's been handed down like what we say when um, when we're preparing food and how we bless our food and all this stuff right so it's uh, I may not be saying the exact same words that my nonna was saying or that my bees nonna was saying or whatever but but it's around the same um, meanings Number 14, do you believe in fantasy creatures such as dragons, fairies, unicorns, etc.? This question, I love this question because it's, uh, it asks, do you believe in fantasy creatures? And then lists creatures or spirits that I, uh, to me are not fantasy. They are absolutely real. They are not on our plane of existence. But there's dragon spirits and there are fairies, elementals. Uh, fairies for me are not fantasy creatures. Mind you, the ones depicted like Tinkerbell on, on in this, you know, in Disney's Tinkerbell or whatever. Yeah, no, that's, that's uh, fiction. But for me, dragons, dragons exist in uh, the spirit world. And if you use if you practice elemental magic you will find that dragons naturally uh, that energy naturally appears when you're working with the element of fire fairies fey she uh, you know gnomes all these these are all earth spirits these are real these are not fantasy creatures um, as perceived by me Unicorns are also not fantasy, it is not a fantasy creature perceived by me. It is also a spirit. Um, you may not see unicorns in our world, in our, um, on this plane, but they do exist on other planes of existence and they definitely are a spirit. Pegasus is another, uh, Pegasus is another one. Um, oh my gosh, I had a few in mind when I saw this this question but yeah do I believe in them absolutely but they are not fantasy creatures they are spirits that exist and spirits I've experienced whose energies I've experienced and uh, encountered and experienced okay number 15 are you solitary or part of a coven so part of a coven so a coven is specifically uh, Wicca. Um, and like other which like organized religions. Um, covens are not what I do. Okay, so let me let me let me just answer the question. So in my solid I am not part of a coven. Part of a coven has a hierarchy, and to be perfectly frank, if I was going to be part of a coven, I would just stay Roman Catholic and attend ch uh, and attend mass every Sunday. Okay, so that would be like, if I if if I'm looking for that kind of structure, if I'm looking for community in that in a religious community, I I would be a proper Catholic. 
um, belonging to a parish, uh, attending Mass every Sunday, involved in the community aspect of my church. Um, so that's why I'm not part of a coven, because to me that's, that's a different religion sense, a different religion, religion form of that. Um, solitary, I'm extremely solitary, but I'm solitary in all aspects. I'm, a, I'm an introvert. Uh, those of you who took Meyer, Myers-Briggs, I'm an INFJ. Um, so I think that is like, what is it the most solitary of the solitaries? So it surprises people when they interact with me that I'm that introverted and that solitary or whatever, but I am. I am. I have to tell you, I'm suffering. Not suffering is such a strong word. Italians are so dramatic. Um, but I am finding, uh, I am exhausted because I don't have that once a week I used to have a day where I was alone for a good six hours and that was enough to recharge for the week. I don't get that anymore. You know, everybody's sheltering in place. Everybody's home, right? I love my family. Don't get me wrong but I really love that alone time to recharge. What is that? Anyway. So, I am solitary. I am solitary. I, uh, I will share, let's say, with family members um, when I'm out in the backyard and I'm, and I'm connecting to nature and, and I'm connecting to the, the plant spirits and whatever. I'll share that with my daughters, with my husband, but otherwise it's, it, it, it's a sharing thing. It's not um, you understand what I'm saying, I hope. What do I think the pros and cons are of each? Okay, so I'm going to try about, I'm going to try, I'm going to start, start with one. Being part of a coven. I think the pros of being part of a coven is that community support. Because when you're already unusual, right? You, because let's face it, it's not mainstream. Well, people think it is, but it's it's not mainstream to practice witchcraft as a religion, right? Um, it's probably more mainstream to have people who are magical spiritual uh, practitioners or uh, follow a magical spiritual path within their religion. So, for instance, people who are folk, uh, folk you know, follow folk Catholicism or. Um, people who are you know there, there's people who are Jewish who have their their Jewish um, and that they're, they're Jewish and they practice the folk magic of where their family is from so Slavic Jews would be practicing a Slavic folk magic and you know what I mean like it's it's different but when you when you um, take witchcraft as a religion in the religious context right like Wicca and I and I speak of Wicca because it's the one I know the best and a coven provides you with community. It provides you with um, community support. It provides you with um, a group of people who understand you. It provides you with hopefully elders, con you know, uh, contact with elders. Um, it provides you um, with le uh, so people to lean on that, you know, um, that, that again with that community support but also it provides you with learning um, and if you are an elder it provides you a place to teach the, the younger generation so this is what I think is um, the pro of a coven um, the cons of a coven I find to be like any other church okay I'm going to describe it as a church you know what I mean there's some people that are just showing up because well they go to coven. <laughs> There's infighting, competition. Um, so let me see. There's infighting, competition. Any any kind of uh, con that can be attached to any kind of group dynamic is present. Can be present also in covens. And I think that that whole pecking order in covens. I always I always imagine, and I've never been part of a coven, but I'm a nurse, and I can imagine that. Um, in an environment like a coven where it's mainly female, um, I'm thinking that there may be uh, incidents of um, elders eating their young. You know what I mean? So 
this is just from what's been account or in, like what's been recounted to me. I like I said, I've never been uh, a member of a coven. I will never be a member of a coven. I am just too solitary, too set in my own ways. I've been on my path for 30, 35 years minimum, even a bit before that when I was a bit, you know, even a little longer than that. I can't, I, 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 um, I wouldn't fit in. They'd ask me to leave. Anyway. Or if they weren't assertive enough to ask me to leave, they'd move the meeting someplace else and just not tell me. All right. Number 16, question number 16. Did I say, did I say the pros and cons? Of, okay, the coven. Oh, the pros and cons of being solitary. The pros of being solitary is that you do what you want to do whenever you want to do it. And you don't have to appeal to a higher authority. You don't have to, um, you know what I mean? Like it's, you are fully autonomous in a solitary uh, situation. At the same time, if you're not introverted, if you're someone who needs, who craves connection with other people, you're most likely not solitary. But suppose you are because of circumstances. You don't know anybody else in your um, community or in your neighborhood or whatever, in your immediate vicinity that, um, shares your philosophies of life and, and death and all this stuff, right? The, the whole metaphysical thing. And, and that's another thing too, right? Um, not all covens are metaphysical. Again, it goes back to, well, is it community? It, like what's his primary mandate? Is it to be a community? Is it to be religious? Is it to be um, metaphysical? So, Whereas solid, solitary, you do whatever the hell you want, whenever the hell you want, and you, you don't have to ask permission. You don't have to. You don't have to ask permission. You don't have to try to get other people to buy into what it is you want to do. But at the same time, you're all alone. So, not everybody is. Not everybody feels good being all alone. You know what I'm saying? It's like for me, it's like, oh, it's, it's heaven. Um, that's not to say I don't need connection with other people, but I get more than enough connection on the weekdays. Anyway. So that's, there's pros and cons for both. You really need to find what works best for you. Number 16. Do you prefer to do spell work during the day or at night and why? I know. I'm sorry. I should have. I should have read these questions before uh, I started recording. Do you prefer to do spell work during the day or at night, and why? I'm constantly doing. I'm constantly working. Um, there's constantly there. There magic. I think I said this already. I'm constantly magicking. I'm constantly witching as a verb. It's day night it doesn't matter i'm constant you know it's it's just a constant um it is part of who i am and how i express myself in this world so do i prefer day or night i it, i would say uh i have no preference it's um there's what i do when i do it that i'm not even aware of anymore because it's just part of my routine and then there's, um, of course, if I'm working during the day, that is not a good, you know, a good time to be, um, practicing. I'm sorry, I struggle with language, huh? When I'm working, my mind is on working. So I would have to say in the evening or at night, because then that's when I'm home and my mind can focus on, um, things that are not work. My job requires 120% of my concentration. So you see what I'm saying? But that's not to say that at the same time that while I'm on work, on work, while I'm at work, I'm not witching as a verb because what I'm doing is I'm constantly, 
asking my guides to to guide me help me help this person today and all that stuff right so there's so there's that constant dialogue um between me and my spirits to make sure that pe you know I, I keep people safe and and um they're my they're my support i can't imagine going to work without them because well i can imagine and usually when i when i'm not listening to my guidance to my inner guidance uh, not a good day so to answer the question because i went all over the place with it do i prefer to do spell work during the day or night and why um i don't it's not something that is outside of me it's not something that is separate from my life it is part of my life at all times and it's whatever time of the day is needed that's when it's done do you prefer oh i just read that 17 do you always cast a circle when wor working magic so casting a circle i think again is um organized witchcraft religion i don't know how to describe this i guess like casting a circle um any kind of metaphysical work you do you need to cast um a protection a field of protection so do i always cast a circle when working magic i always cast a circle period if you, I, I don't call it casting a circle but energetically i am constantly uh, maintaining the energetic field of my home of myself, my home, my family members, my work environment, everything is constantly, um, I'm always casting, or I wouldn't call it casting, I am con uh, constantly conscious of and maintaining um, the energetic integrity of my workspace, whatever that may be. So since I'm always witching and since magic is part of my daily life, it's into it's it's woven into every every mundane thing that I do, uh, every breath that I take. I guess the answer is yes to number seventeen. Eighteen. Do you use herbs and or crystals in your personal practice? If so, which are your favorites and why? I use the the herbs. Um, the I most of the, I, I mainly use the herbs I grew up with. Is what I'm trying to say. So I mainly use herbs that are found in my pantry. I don't, um, I have the occasional herb in my, um, in my herbal cupboard. Like I have a, a separate little spice cabinet where I have herbs that are non food grade or non edible. Um, so there's some herbs I like to work with and they are mullein and, um, dogwood, um, Rue, rue is not edible. Rue is a big one. I don't even know why I said that. Why I didn't say that once. I have so much rue growing around my house. Um, in my backyard, my front yard, it's so prolific. Um, and I use it. I use it a lot in um, in my herbal uh, magic. Um, I all the herbs in my pantry. Uh, I use um, for I use them a lot and it's it's basil oregano rosemary thyme I don't like thyme in my food um, I don't it's just a preference right so but I do use thyme in um, magic uh, chamomile lavender um, bay leaf cinnamon not really an herb it's a bark but i'll pop it under herb so yeah there's a i use a lot of herbs um and they're my my favorites are the ones that are in my um food pantry and my and my favorite are the ones that i can incorporate in food um and drinks and stuff like that because a lot of what i do is kitchen witchery most of what i do is kitchen witchery and also um, the health benefits of these herbs um, are also woven into my magic. Crystals, my favorite crystals are the clear quartz. It's, uh, it's an all-rounder, selenite. Uh, selenite is an excellent conductor of Reiki energy. I'm, um, 
I'm a Reiki master teacher. It's uh, 20 years now. Wow, time flies. And um, so selenite is my favorite uh, in, in that sense. I have quite a, I have a selenite tower. I have a selenite, oh, right there. I have a selenite uh, tea light holder right there. Um, which, um, yeah. Tourmaline, I like tourmaline. It's really good for um, keeping away uh, the heebie-jeebies, um, the um, creepy crawlies. What else? I'm not like I just love rocks in general, right? And I don't have a whole um, crystal collection for all different purposes, but I'll have multiples of the ones I use a lot, the Venturine, uh, Carnelian, um, Rose Quartz, Smoky Quartz is one that um, I need, I, I need to get one because I lost it. Um, in my, what, what I have been using, um, since a labradorite is oh lab I love labradorite it totally amplifies um, magic um, and it totally uh, it magnifies and it focuses your um, your magic really nicely I'm hoping to one day have a labradorite ring um, that I can wear um, I just haven't found one that I really really you know. Anyway, um, but uh, what I have been carrying um, in my pockets every day has been uh, black onyx. Um, black onyx in my left pocket when I go to work, right? Black onyx in my left pocket, my labradorite in my right pocket, and my river jasper in my scrub pocket, left side. And I don't know, I just, I forget about them during the day. Um, but now I'd feel naked if I left the house without them in the morning. So I just, I make sure it's part of my routine where um, I remove my rings. Like I remove my uh, amber and my moonstone ring. I remove my rings and I put the stones in my pockets. Garnet is another one of my favorite. I have a garnet nugget. nugget. A garnet nugget. It's about this big. Um, and it's the first ever crystal pendant I ever purchased. It looks a little beat up. Um, I had to glue the little metal uh, jump ring or thing back to it with super glue because it had come undone and it did not affect the potency of uh, my garnet pendant. It, like I said, it's my first ever crystal pendant. It's my all-time favorite, and I wear it when I need grounding. I wear it um, when I need to make sure that I stay in my body and not somewhere up here, um, which those of you who suffer anxiety probably know what I mean, where you're, you're, you're in here instead of being inside your body when you need to be inside your body because you have work to do, right? That's a very long answer. Answer number 19. How did you come to your personal path? Um, it was, it wasn't a creating of a path. It was, it was a finding, um, it was a landing on my path. It was a, it was an awakening, a realization that I was um, was quite young. I would say a lot of people um, experience this. It's not just me. Where uh, I was really young, so my first experience of knowing that things were not as they seem was my I had my first ever near death experience. I was a child like a young, like I was a toddler. It was a very, I remember it like it was yesterday, to um, 
go from being free and floating around and and then being captured um, by my guardian angel um, who has shown themselves to me many many times in my life usually when I'm in crisis and um, basically caught me like a butterfly in a butterfly net and uh, brought me home <laughs> so so the next day I'm looking at the world and I kind of know that one I'm a little uh, I'm feeling a little strange because how you know I'm a toddler I must have been two three years old and I start saying things to my parents that totally freak them out because I'm two or three years old um, so already from then I kind of knew there was something a little uh, unique about what I was drawn to um, and then by the age of 10 I realized that I was not like I wasn't like the other kids um, and I wasn't like the adults in my family either so um, so yeah you and it was I came to my personal path when I accepted that because um, my first impression of realizing that I'm different was not one of oh that's so cool oh I'm so special no it was it was horrendous it was horrifying already I didn't fit in I already um, being a foster kid and an only child with uh, parents who were divorced in the early 70s and living you know being being Italian American with parents who were divorced in the early 70s my mom Everybody knew my mom was mentally ill and in an institution. Already, it's like it was enough. It's, uh, my the weirdness factor was already through the roof. So to have that sudden knowing, to have that understanding, that wake up call, that you're different, is not welcome. I did not welcome it. I fought it. I fought it really hard. I fought it for years wanting I fought it because I wanted to be just like everyone else but I'm not and I found I came to my personal path when I accepted that I'm not like everyone else or that I wasn't like everyone else in my immediate surroundings because you know I don't want to make it sound like you know there could be there's people out there I know that are just like me or uh, uh, you know what I mean like that are similar to me but those people were not did not exist in my immediate surroundings and it was also hard to accept because there was someone in my family who I resembled a lot in terms of path and how I experienced the world and my connection to nature and all that, and that was my mom. You know, being psychic, uh, my mom understood me because my mom was psychic. Um, my dad was psychic, but my dad, I don't even want to touch on it. My dad was, I made peace with my dad. I made peace with my relationship with my dad five years after he died. So my personal path has been um, solitary, has always been solitary. And it was a realization of what my path is that finally gave me some sense of stability in a life wrought with instability so oh my gosh sorry I don't even know if I answered the question and I'll do number 20 and I'll and I'll leave the the rest for next time what do you do when you are in a witchy funk
so funk. I think that happens with a lot of things, right? If, you know, you can replace the word with the, you know, witchy with, you know, uh, you're in a spiritual funk or whatever. I was in a funk. I was in a funk. Um, and what I did was I heed the call. I heeded the call of my spirits finally after ignoring them and ignoring the message, you know, ignoring the signs and all this stuff to um, go out into nature, to reconnect, you know, to reconnect with nature. And this has helped my funk. Uh, this has brought me out of my witchy funk. Um, I had disconnect, I had, I had disconnected so much from nature to the point where I was like inside my head, not even in my body for, for years. Um, just for circumstances, for what I was doing. Um, three, four years inside my head instead of in my body. So right now it's like, you know, um, reconnecting with nature has helped, has helped pull me out of that funk. Um, green witchcraft, green witchery is pulling me out of that funk. Um, that uh, reconnecting with nature spirits. Um, yesterday we went out, we bought some trees. I've been wanting a li my own lilac tree my whole life. And we got two, two little lilac trees that we're going to be planting. Um, uh, we got a crab apple tree because crab apples are cool. They're very witchy, um, very magical. So that's a blackberry bush. You know, I just went out, got some more to, to fill in the gaps in my backyard that uh, stuff that had just, you know, run its course and died. Um, so that's how, when I'm in a funk, um, I stop and ponder, like, you know, and think to myself, where, where am I not, where am I disconnected? Where, you know, what am I not doing that, that, um, feeds my soul right now, this, this very minute today, I'm reconnecting with home and hearth because um, it has been, for a lot of people, including myself, it's been a pretty trying couple of months. And I feel like I had lost touch of, in my heart, I am a very domestic person. In my heart, I'm a stay-at-home mom. In my heart, I am uh, a housewife. Um, but I, but there's also part of me that's um, a professional. There's a part of me that goes out and works. Uh, I need this balance. And I was really unbalanced the last two months where all I had the energy to do was <sighs> go to work and come home and like, try to decompress to go back to work and it's just because like a lot of people it's uh, it's been a little a little you know unusual right with what's going on and um i'm going to share with you the stalker card so i've mentioned this this deck a few times on my channel since i got it the ancestral path tarot and i was um and the last time i mentioned it i said i was going to um pass it along I don't know I don't think so I think it's uh, wormed its way into my heart this has been my stalker card this one and there's another one but this one came up for me again today and it uh, this is a message for me on so many levels and it was so was so apropos. So today I'm doing the traditional Italian American Sunday gravy thing. Um, and uh, it's doing wonders for me. Like already I feel I feel like I I'm in the I'm going in a step in the right direction. I need to come back to hearth and home because I need that balance. 
I need that balance because without that balance, um, I literally become ill. I literally, literally, I will experience pain in my body when I'm out of balance. Um, I think I also need to, um, yeah, I need to spend a little time and figure out, okay, what are the parts of me that make me balance? What are the things I do that help me stay in balance? And I need to um, retrieve those parts of myself. Um, I may have to work a little bit too on some soul retrieval. Um, I'm a little spread out there. Uh, so, yeah. So that's um, questions 10 to 20 in uh, Heather Carter's wonderful um, prompts uh, for um, 31 days of witchcraft. Oh my god, seriously people, sorry about that. Um, please. Um, Feel welcome to leave comments below. Share with me, like if you know, if you're not one that's going to post a video, share with me uh, your answers to these questions. Share with me what your thoughts are. Um, I apologize. Uh, I wanted to do this tag because I um, I found the questions really interesting, and I love Heather Carter. Um, but I apologize if you're finding that my answers are a little like. Uh, I'm just doing my best. I'm, I'm struggling with these questions. They're difficult. They're difficult questions. <laughs> All right. Um, they, they, these questions challenge me because I'm... They're challenging. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in. And I'm wishing you all a beautiful day.